What's up, my friends? My name is Andrew. This is another whiskey review. Uh, tonight's review is specifically for the bourbon lovers. Uh, we've got not just one bourbon to review tonight, but two here. And we have got uh, siblings, if you will. We have the Angel's Envy, uh, just the regular standard release, 86.6 proof bourbon. And we've got it right next to the same year's release of the Angel's NB Cask Strength bourbon. So we have essentially um, the whiskey straight out of the barrel, and then we have the whiskey watered down significantly for more standard release offerings. So I'm going to compare these two, taste them both, give tasting notes, give recommendations, scores, etc. Before I get to it, I'll tell you a little bit about the Angel's NB distillery. Uh, this is actually only very recently a distillery. Uh, they've got a new modern facility in downtown Louisville where uh, they're producing their own distillate, but they are still years away from actually being able to sell it. Uh, before that, what these whiskeys would be, uh, they sourced from undisclosed Kentucky distilleries. I'll get into that here in a second. And so this is sourced whiskey that they buy from another distillery that produces it. Angel's Envy then either buys the distillate, puts it in their own barrels and ages it where they please, or they actually go to this other undisclosed distillery and pick aged stock from there, uh, from, from their warehouses and then bring it on over to bottle it, do whatever they want. Now what makes Angel's Envy their bourbon here peculiar is that this is not technically a straight bourbon whiskey because it's been finished for six months in X port casks. Port is a, a fortified wine that originates, wouldn't you guess, in Portugal. It's very sweet. It's a dessert wine. Uh, try it sometime. Port's actually really dang good. So technically, even though this is straight bourbon whiskey, uh, it can't be labeled as straight bourbon whiskey because it spent the time in port cast and to only be straight bourbon, it can only be aged in new American oak barrels. Now, the, the caveat to this, if you look at an Angel's Envy bourbon bottle, uh, they can call it straight bourbon, but they have to say very clearly that something was added to it. In this case, the wording goes straight bourbon whiskey finished in port casks. And this is actually really a great thing. Say what you will about American whiskey laws, particularly bourbon laws, but it really protects the consumer, um, especially with straight designations, things like that. In this case, I think it's a great thing. And you get to find out right up front that this has something extra done to it. Nothing added to it, nothing artificial. It's not like they're pumping in flavoring or pumping in coloring. They're just using another method to age the bourbon than straight new American oak. This is really similar in the Scotch industry, the Irish whiskey industry, uh, and I think that it is going to become much more prevalent in the American whiskey and bourbon industry as well. You know, you see just over the last few years, you know, many, many, many craft distilleries that open all over the nation, and even in Kentucky, new distilleries are opening, current distilleries like Buffalo Trace, um, Maker's Mark, Heaven Hill, Jim Beam, Wild Turkey, you name it, are expanding and increasing production like crazy. The marketplace has probably never been as cluttered with quality options as it is right now. And so what you're going to start seeing is more distilleries trying to differentiate their product. More distilleries will start experimenting with things other than just new American oak uh, you already can find a few examples of those. We won't get into them now for the sake of time, but they're out there and they're becoming much more prevalent. So let's go back real quick before I get to tasting. I said uh, Angel's Envy whiskey comes from an undisclosed distillery. They can't legally tell you where it's from. But if we put on our critical thinking caps, we can make a very educated guess here. Angel's Envy was started by the ex master distiller of Woodford Reserve. Woodford Reserve is owned by Brown Foreman and Woodford Reserve whiskey actually gets a significant amount of uh, its stock from the big Brown Foreman 
old Forester distillery that pumps out all the old Forester juice. So uh, if you go to Angels Envy's website, it's a fantastic website, very informative. It does tell you the mash bill of its bourbons, which is 72% corn, 18% rye, 10% malt to barley. Wouldn't you know, this is the exact same mash bill that all of Old Forester uses and all of Woodford Reserve uses. So it is very, very likely that this bourbon was distilled at the Old Forester Distillery, which couldn't tell you off the top of my head where that's at in Kentucky, but it's a huge distillery, makes all the Old Forester bourbon, also makes a lot of the Woodford Reserve bourbon. Now, let's get to tasting. We'll start with the standard release. This is bottled at 86.6 proof. Uh, it is, you know, chill filtered just like pretty much every other non straight out of the barrel bourbon. Spent six months in port pipes. Let's get into it. Start with the nose. It's a sweet nose right off the bat. I notice sweet corn and corn syrup, uh, soft dry oak. A chewy uh, sort of vanilla nougat and some sweet tobacco uh, it's actually got a nice balance between sweet and dry here and it's incredibly uh, easy to smell there's no tickle there's no burn I could probably snort this liquid and I doubt it would burn my nostrils <laughs> just a hint on the tail end here deep down underneath of some jammy soft fruits Things like plum, pineapple, tangerine, a uh, slight citrus element that I'm interpreting as those two latter fruits. Makes this overall an inassertive but pleasant nose. Up front, right upon entry, the palate again is sweet oaky, nougat, vanilla taffy, cream corn. There's definitely a grain element prevalent in this whiskey. Uh, towards the latter end of the palate and then onto the finish, a green uh, woody element prevails here. Think like if you strip the bark, the green wet stuff underneath the dry exterior bark layer. That's the kind of wood I'm talking about here. And it also gets pretty grainy again on the finish, even more than it already does. Um, less sweet, something akin to cornmeal here on the finish. And then finally, uh, you're left with some lingering maple candies, a much needed element of a sweetness other than corn sweetness. Uh, and some, I call them red fruit skins. Finally, something that tells you this has a port influence. And honestly, something kind of like bubble gum. Uh, a bubble gum, or especially on the finish, uh, almost an artificial vanilla. We'll take one more drink, see if there's anything else to be found, and then we'll move on. Second drink here. A little bit more fruit comes forward. It's not a, a clear or rich or fresh fruit. It's still like, it's almost like bubble gum fruit flavored bubble gum, uh, a little bit of fruit skins, not very tannic, just verging on it. And it is a pretty nice maple candy note, sweet maple. The body is thin, uh, it's, it's watery. Overall, this is squarely a good bourbon. It's not gonna knock your socks off. Uh, if you like to use the term, you could definitely call it smooth. Uh, you know, I mean, you could drink it like water. Let's put it that way. It's flavorful enough. It's got a little bit more corn and grain than I would like. Uh, but overall, this is an extremely easy sipper, this standard release. I'll go ahead and score it now, and then I'll move on to the cast strength. Seventy-five out of a hundred is what I'm giving the standard release Angels Envy Bourbon. Uh, if you remember, I use a true hundred point scale, not a letter grade scale. So uh, fifty-five is an average whiskey. Seventy-five uh, would be squarely good. 
Uh, now this whiskey is going to run you probably around 50 bucks if you can find it. For that price, I would not recommend you go out and buy a bottle of this whiskey. Uh, try a pour of it. It is good. It's certainly not bad whiskey. Uh, but try a pour of it. See if it hits your sweet spot. Only then would I recommend going and spending $50. Definitely don't just go and buy a bottle before you try this first. Uh, because it's not that special. Like I said, it's good. But you can find whiskeys that I've given the same score to for $25 less. Several of them. So, there you have standard release Angel's Envy. Let's move on now to the Barrel Proof. Just a side note. Look at the difference in color between these. These are likely pretty close to the same age. Uh, Angel's Envy states on their website that all of their bourbon is aged somewhere between four and six years, then with the additional six months or so in the port pipes. So this really is only the difference of a, a significant amount of water being added. Uh, and, and honestly, that should tell you something. Just looking at these colors, again, neither of these whiskeys have color added. We know that because they're straight bourbons. Uh, this is when you can compare colors and they might tell you something about the quality or at very least they're going to tell you something about what you can expect. I would expect to find more concentrated aromas and flavors in this because you have a much more concentrated pigment here which of course this being straight out of the barrel, this being watered down uh, you know by 40 proof points you would expect that. This 2016 release of the cast strength here Followed at 124 proof, 62% alcohol by volume, completely unfiltered. Again, that adds another element of texture and flavor, unchill filtered, uh, and in this case, totally unfiltered versus this guy, which has been both filtered and chill filtered. Uh, so let's find out what we see here with the cast strength. Totally different animal on the nose would not guess that these two uh, were the same distillate, same age, same stuff. Again, it's fairly sweet, but this one is full of a really heavy brown sugar, cinnamon note, uh, a thick molasses, and quite a bit more fruit, purple plums, uh, sweet fig, some tobacco. This nose here is incredibly dense. And still for 62% alcohol by volume, there's very little tickle, very little burn, if you will. The aromas are clear, they're dense, they're polished, fantastic on the nose here. Fruit forward upon entry. I love seeing that. The port pipe influence in the cask strength shows up beautifully, whereas it's anemic uh, and, and hardly, hardly found in the standard release. It is beautifully apparent here, both on the nose and the palate. On the palate, it comes across upon entry, like I said, fruit forward, heavy caramel. There is a little bit of an entry burn that uh, it, it intensifies mid palate, but then it recedes after maybe four or five seconds, and then it's all just flavor. In this case, the port comes across uh, like blueberry syrup. I kid you not, blueberry syrup or blueberry preserves, plum, just the perfect amount of a spice note in the background, maybe something like clove. The finish, uh, the blueberry gets sweeter. Uh, if that's, you know, I already said it was syrup before, I'm gonna go a step further now and call it, you know, more akin to like blueberry pie filling on the finish. Uh, a nice layer of sweet oak, some caramel, some tobacco, and it just lingers with that blueberry note here in the finish. Absolutely gorgeous whiskey from nose through the palate to the finish here in the cast strength. I'm gonna take one more sip because this is freaking delicious. This cask strength, not so much this guy, this guy here shows the potential that exists in experimenting with different wine cask finishes in straight bourbon. Uh, it excites me to see 
of what can become of the bourbon industry if more people catch a hold of this. Don't get me wrong, what makes American bourbon unique is the charred new American oak, the very, um, you know, the the flavors that you get in a standard bourbon of the oak, the caramel, the spice, the vanilla, those all come from largely, besides the mash bill, from the new charred American oak that is hardly used in scotch. Scotch never uses virgin cast, very rarely I should say, they use a lot of uh, a refill cast of different types. But I'm not saying I want bourbon to lose its uniqueness, but in a crowded bourbon market where we're seeing tons of innovation in order to create separation of product, uh, I love having something like this on the shelf next to your other bourbons. Something with more fruit than you're going to find in any other bourbon. Definitely a different type of fruit. In this case, like I said, it's coming across most clearly to me as blueberry preserves, blueberry syrup. Uh, this is a masterful whiskey. Now, that said, this comes at, uh, I'll say it, what I believe is an asinine price point. Uh, I did a quick search. The cheapest I found uh, this Angel's Envy barrel proof of any year was around 180, 190 bucks. A lot of places had it as high as 300 bucks for a bottle. Uh, I will say, I'll go ahead and score this now. I'm going to score this very, very well. Ninety-three out of hundred for the cast strength. Uh, again, to get above 90 on my scale is not easy. Above 90 means you are looking at a truly exceptional whiskey here. Uh, that being said, $200 is out of my price range 99 times out of 100. Unless it's Christmas or my birthday, $200 is well out of my price range that I'm going to spend on a bottle of whiskey. That said, if it's in your price range, if you can drop 200 bucks like it's nothing on whiskey, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you get this without flinching, without thinking twice. Grab a bottle of this if it's in your price range. Uh, otherwise, if it's not, I'm going to tell you it is worth the effort to find a friend or find a bar. You know, drop 20 bucks or 25 bucks for a two ounce pour of this stuff so you can have this experience. Sip it slow, maybe add a little bit of water. It doesn't need it. Uh, if you do remember just a few drops, but this is worth the experience here. I can't praise this cask strength angels envy enough the standard release. Like I said, I don't think it's worth its weight. I don't think it's worth its price of 50 bucks. Find a pour before you buy this guy, buy it if you're able to, if not find a pour because it deserves to be experienced by everybody that loves bourbon, everybody that loves port, everybody that just loves a damn fine whiskey so that's it hope you guys enjoyed this i'll be back soon with more whiskey reviews thanks again wbsc you guys are the best i love you brett loves you the whole team uh you guys are awesome best group out there have a great night cheers